Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, this is going to be the first uh, video in the Inspire Paint tutorial that we uh, talked about the other day. And uh, that's this line of paint right here uh, that I ordered in for the first time. Gave them a try and been doing some experiments with them and uh, seemed to be working out real well. And let's see, what we're going to do first is we're going to work on... Uh, the different things that we're going to be using. Um, so everybody has an understanding of exactly what I'm spraying, what I'm spraying with, uh, and everything that I'm using. So the first thing that we're going to touch on is the airbrush compressor. There's a lot of um, information out there on airbrush compressors, what you should have, what you shouldn't buy, you know, uh, uh, you know how much money to spend for one, whether they have this feature or that feature, and you know, Personally, I think it's all personal preference. Uh, I used to use the big airbrush compressors with, uh, or actually uh, small compressors that are made for like nail guns and stuff like that. Uh, I had one down underneath of uh, the bench here where the uh, spray booth is sitting. And those things are just too loud. They're just ridiculous. So finally, when the one that I had blew up, I went out to uh, Harbor Freight and I bought this little... Um, I think this was like $70 or $80 for this little airbrush compressor, and it comes with the regulator already on it, the water trap, um, a pressure gauge, and it's very, very quiet. Uh, this thing, and it does everything that I need it to do. Uh, this is what I sprayed my competition models with, and um, I could not, you know, be happier with this setup. A lot of people talk about pulsations through the airbrush. I do not have them with this. Um, I have this set at uh, usually right around 20 PSI through my Grex airbrush, and uh, it works great. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, I'm going to set this down on the floor now and get it out of the way. So we'll set that down there in the corner. Uh, the next thing we're going to be using is the uh, Grex Tritium Series um, Center Gravity Feed Airbrush. Uh, nothing special. This is about uh, right around a $200 airbrush. You can interchange the needles and nozzles in this. Um, right now, this is equipped with a uh, 0.3 needle and nozzle. Uh, you can put a, a you can get a range of uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.7. You can also get a fan spray tip um, for the end of it. Uh, today, we're just going to be using a normal tip on this with the 0 0.3 needle and nozzle set up. So nothing special there. And, uh, you know, there's a big thing out there on what airbrush you should use. And like I say, Gil is doing a bunch of videos over to uh, Red Dragon Model Works. And um, he's going to have some real good information on, you know, his, uh, you know, opinions and expertise on, on different airbrushes and what he recommends for certain people. Um, I know uh, Gil doesn't particularly like the Grexes. Um, I think he's tried them. And, um, you know, it, it's just not an airbrush, I think, that was for him. But I have... Uh, you know, extremely good luck with it. So this is my go-to airbrush. I use this, you know, the majority of the times on most of my finishes. I also have an XT, which is a side feed Grex. And then, of course, all the other airbrushes I have hanging up here. But uh, this is the one that I use the most. This is what we'll be using in the video. Uh, next, we're going to move on to um, the primer. Uh, I did find on the candy style paints, um, as many of you know, I don't always prime my models, but on the candy paints, when I sprayed this uh, cab face here uh, just for a test, I did notice that without primer and a candy finish, uh, you get a lot of light color around your raised detail. And I really wasn't, didn't know what was going on with that. I didn't know if it was residue on it or whatever, but I took the uh, same panel and actually sprayed it with a coat of primer first and then did my base coat and uh, it solved all that problem. So I'm going to say now, as far as, you know, this tutorial and what I've learned, uh, always prime if you're going to use a candy paint. Uh, a lot of times I do not prime my models, but I don't normally spray with candies. But today we'll be doing the um, tutorial on the candy paint itself. So uh, the primer that, that I'm going to be using that I've done a video on a while back is the Color Line Primer from Napa. This is the gray. Uh, this is a lacquer primer. A very good product. I've had real good luck with it. Um, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, but um, once you get used to it, it, you know, it goes on well. It sands good. It's cheap. Uh, you can buy this for about $3 a can, which is not bad. 
Uh, in fact, the other day I went out and bought, uh, I think it was three or four cans of it, something like that, and uh, just to keep it in stock. So that's what we're going to be using for primer. And I'm going to be using, uh, this is actually in a Dupacolor bottle, uh, lacquer thinner, but this is the cheap, uh, I think it's made by Sunnyside from Walmart, uh, lacquer thinner that I put into this can because it's a lot easier to pour out than using the big gallon jugs. So uh, we're going to be using a little bit of lacquer thinner. And next we're going to be using, of course, the uh, candy orange from Inspire that, uh, you know, the whole tutorial is based around. And under that, I'm going to be using the Spastix uh, Silver Metallic. Now, Inspire does have a flake that goes under their airbrush paints. I have not tried them yet. I have some coming in, and I want to see how they work. But for right now, I'm going to be using the Spastix. Uh, the one thing that I'm kind of hesitant on using the uh, Inspire Flake is I think they're more of a coarse flake, and I'm not sure if they're going to go through the airbrush properly. Uh, I may have to change up to the 5 or the 7 needle. And uh, even then, I'm not sure if they'll go through. But if you have a flake that's that large and you're spraying a 124 scale model, uh, you are grossly out of scale. So uh, I did use the Spazdix uh, as a test on a couple of things here, and it does work very well. And uh, it holds up no reaction to the um, Inspire paint. So that's what we're going to be using as a base. And the number on that is 00300 uh, Silver Metallic. And I think that's about all the materials we're going to be using. And last night I did a couple of uh, test sprays. Uh, these two spoons here are actually painted with that Candy Orange Inspire. This spoon here is uh, no primer, just over the white spoon. And you can see that you can get a real nice orange color out of that. Uh, it's not a candy, uh, even though it is a candy paint. It became, you know, it, it looks just like a regular paint you would spray out of a can and not a candy. Uh, with no metallic in it, but it's a pretty decent color. Now, when you spray it over a silver base, it comes out like this. Uh, you can see the, you know, it glistens a little bit more. It has the metallic in it, and it starts to show the candy finish. So that was an experiment I done last night just to see what candy would do over a non-silver base. Or you can also spray it over a gold base, uh, which will make the color a little bit darker and deeper. Uh, this piece here was uh, one that I did spray last night. This is the uh, candy paint, and this is what we're going to be duplicating today. Um, this is sprayed down with the color line primer, and then over that we did the spastic silver flake, and then we did a couple uh, coats of the candy orange, and then I sprayed it with uh, the top coat was actually done with my trusty one coat lacquer uh, wet look clear. So that's all it took to do that. And when we get started, we will be spraying this uh, sleeper roof for a, uh, I think it's come out of a MAC kit. Uh, this is what we'll be spraying as the, um, as the guinea pig, I guess you could say. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and prime this and we're going to paint it. Uh, I haven't done any cleanup on this. This is straight out of the parts box as is. Uh, you know, this hasn't even been washed yet or anything like that. And uh, we just wiped it down. And we're going to spray it and just show you how easy this is to do. Nothing hard about it at all. And, of course, we'll be using the spray booth here. A lot of people don't have the, this type of spray booth. Uh, this is a downdraft and um, works very well. Some people like the homemade spray booths. Um, I had one of those before. I really enjoy this spray booth. I've had it for several years now. Uh, as you can see, I got the light in the top of it. Um, I got a free filter here and then my big filter. And it uh, works very well. So we're going to be using that also. So uh, that's all the products we're going to be using. When I come back, we'll spray some primer on this, and then we will do the base coat, and then we will do the candy coat and a clear coat, and that will finish up the video series. So uh, stay tuned for the next one coming up when we start primering. Um, as always, I thank you for watching and supporting Showtime Studios, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.